Okay, so I'm going to talk about the show that's at Nottingham uh, now, which, like I said, is called The Universal Addressability of Dumb Things. Okay, so I'll, I'll begin with this. So the, the, way, the way the show happened was that Haywood uh, in London ask, I don't know, every, I think every couple of years, they ask an artist to kind of curate a show. I don't know why I'm going to curate they ask him to curate a show. And they asked me, and which was great and then very exciting. And when they asked me, I thought, well, that's, that's fantastic, but what can I do? Um, what can I do that's not just displaying how good my taste is? Do you know what I mean? Well, how, you know, because. I think that's what a lot of artist-led curated shows are. They're just, you just get to see how kind of tasteful they are. I'm saying that in a very pejorative way. It's okay, I like it. I like seeing other artists' taste, but I thought it was quite dull for me to do that. Um, partly because my, my taste is not that great. Um, and so there was that as a, as a kind of question mark over my head. And also... It seemed like the idea of, of, put, of, of arranging objects in a room, like placing things in a room, I, I mean, it, it still kind of interests me and excites me, but at the same time, I feel that it's not, well, not exhausted, but that it's, it's, it's difficult. It's kind of, it's not what I do. In a sense, it's not what we do anymore. We, we, you know, we we move images around. We, we circulate images. Yeah? We we aggregate images from everywhere and we do things with them. Yeah? We manipulate them and we send them back out. And so to work with objects, you know, solid objects that have to be kind of delivered, it's kind of back to this long tail idea. It's like it, it gets back to something. Of, that, that seems kind of more 20th century or even older, you know, of, 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 um, of, of physically moving objects and putting them on pins. Um, whereas you can do that instantly on, a, on, your, on your laptop. Um, and so I wanted to try and make something that was, you know, it's impossible. I mean, I, I don't know how you'd make a wholly digital show when you've been asked by uh, a gallery to, to, to tour it. I don't know how you'd do that, be quite, I didn't want to make a film. Um, but I, so I wanted to make something that was like a hybrid. I wanted to make something that was kind of in the physical realm, but kind of came from the kind of digital realm. Yeah, so this, well this is, what I, the first thing I did was I made this proposal for a show so basically, I have to. Uh, the way it works with the Haywood is that they have to find a venue for you, and uh, it's like being on a uh, The Voice or something. You know, the, the, most of the most of the venues say, "Yeah, we kind of like it, but we're not we're not really that interested in showing it." So you have to kind of you have to kind of hawk yourself around a bit. You have to go in there, and, and this is how I did it. I put. I, I made a. I made a proposal as a video and I put it on YouTube and then the Haywood could go around to these different venues and say, this is what Mark wants to do, are you interested? So this is... This is, this is a proposal for a show. A curated show that I've been invited to put together. That is going to happen, but at the moment is just here. The idea for this show developed out of a talk that I gave a couple of years ago called In the Long Tail, which was about, amongst other things, how the autistic logic of cybernetics ends up producing like, the voluptuous irrationalism of YouTube, and how digital technology disappears real world objects by dematerializing them dispossesses them of their shadows, if you like. I 
I've been asked to curate an exhibition. And curating is basically moving things around in a room, which is about as far as you can get from the boundless, weightless, long tail. So, to create this show, I'm looking then for what's called a thin place. A place where the boundary between the actual and virtual worlds is especially thin. André Breton, back in 1924, proposed the fabrication of certain objects which are approached only in dreams. These dream or phantom objects were to be put into circulation to collide on a daily basis with real world entities. In Second Life, if an object is phantom, it means that the rules of solid matter do not entirely apply to it. It does not collide with anything except the ground. It can sit, but it can't be sat on. The full SL definition of a phantom object is something that exists in one region but hangs over into another one. Accordingly, I've been searching for these phantom objects that hang over between the material world and what the US military calls the fifth domain, the additional territory that comes after land, sea, sky and space, the immaterial arena of cyberspace that hovers over the terrestrial realm like a suspension of disbelief. I've thought of lots of titles for the show. The universal addressability of dumb things was one. Technosis was another. Almost medieval, aboriginal science fiction. The one at the moment is phantom objects from the five domains. With all of them, I'm trying to conjure up this other idea from the long tail talk. The paradox that the more pervasive technology becomes in our lives, the more it invokes the mindscapes of our ancestral past. And it's then I begin to realise that the tale is actually unfathomably long, that it reaches back through geological amounts of time, that it circles round and back to an archaic state of being, an aboriginal world of primal pleasures, full of voices, a landscape where even the rocks and the stones have names. You know, I was talking about the re-enchantment of the world. Uh, that's, that was, that was proposal for the show. Uh, and I, like I say, I posted that up on YouTube. Um, I mean, this, I'll get, I'll get onto the show a bit. There's some, I like this, you know, there's two things in that that I, that I, that I should, that I want to point out. One is um, that I keep using my own work over and over again. I like that idea. Uh, the sound systems in the show in Nottingham, the long tails in that. I like using my work again and again. Um, and the other thing is I like, I, I, I like the idea of anything that I do, any, anything I do in the, in the kind of art world is, is, a, is a kind of work in itself, yeah? So rather than a proposal being just a, a written proposal, it becomes a piece of work. And, you know, that should extend to, like, this lecture, but I don't know if this... I don't know if I'm selling myself well enough to call this a lecture, but, you know, all things that I do are, are should be... I feel should be the same. They should, they should be equal. Um, and I like that idea. I'm trying to do more of that. So that's, um, that was proposal for a show, and... These are the, the, so these are the kind of mock-ups that I did originally. And I don't know if you've been to see uh, the show, but, um, but they're, they're not that different. And, well, that one is. Um, yeah, see, that, that's the real one in Liverpool. And that's the, that's the, that's the image, the Photoshop. <laughs> and, um, and I like that. I wanted, you know, essentially, I wanted to make, I wanted to make these booths that you go because this is a, this is a, a kind of booth, and I wanted these booths to be, um, 
to be to be images. You know, I wanted them to I wanted them to have objects in them, but I wanted you to view them as an image, and I wanted that image to look like a collage. You know, I I wanted it to. I wanted the place where it came from, where I made it originally, i.e. in Photoshop, to kind of, to still be there in some way. And then it just looked like a kind of 3D tumbler. That's kind of what I was after with this show, is to look like a, just a, an aggregation of kind of images that I thought, that I just put together. Um, and there was something I said in that, in that little long tail clip, I don't know if, if it came across, but I mean, the, the idea of the show for me originally was to try and, I don't know, it's, it's this, it's it, an idea of the more, you know, the more ubiquitous, the more, the more technology we use, the more advanced technology becomes, the more it can kind of conjure up images out of nowhere and it can create sounds that are kind of everywhere. The, the, you get this weird paradox where it, it kind of takes us, you know, mentally it kind of it kind of boomerangs us back to a kind of more, um, you know, to a more kind of prehistoric time of of kind of of kind of uh, animism, you know, the idea that that uh, all all the things in the world, all the objects in the world, all the trees, the rocks, the stones, frogs, foxes, the sky, wind. You know, they, they all have a spirit that resides within them and, uh, you know, that, that you can communicate with them. You know, it's a kind of, it's a kind of aboriginal idea, yeah? Every, everything, everything's in communication with everything else uh, in, this kind of, in, the, in this kind of spirit world. But a spirit world that kind of hovers over the kind of earth, uh, the, 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 you know, the physical world. And, and, you know, these kind of communications that we're all using now, it, it seems to me that it kind of, it feels like that, you know, it feels like sort of magic's in the air again, that I just, I mean, I don't know, maybe for you, as, it, it, if, if you're younger than me, it doesn't seem as, as kind of, um, it doesn't seem as mind-blowing, but, you know, when I go on, you know, I sit, I sit at this all day, and I think, I see a reference to a book, or I think of a book, and I go, oh yeah, and I order it. And the next day, you know, I order it on Amazon, the next day it's there. Um, and it seems like, and, and any image, you know, I want an image of anything, I just, go, I just search for it and it's there. It's like everything is, is kind of, you know, the, the distinction between the, the imagination and reality seems to have, have, seems to have blurred, seems to have kind of become kind of, uh, much closer, you know, things that things that before would just be in my head are now visible. Do you know what I mean? And that that I find that kind of uh, yeah, I find I find that really really uh, disconcerting, but also really enchanting as well, um, and exciting, as you know, to 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 be able to have recourse to that kind of archive of images and to be able to do, you know, to to just access them immediately they're just there available at your fingertips and then you can you can as i say manipulate them and then and then send them back out is is really um is really thrilling you know and and so that's i don't know that's that's what i was trying to do with the show was was kind of um make these kind of you know i i wanted these you know all the objects i got are, are already they have their own magic, they have their own kind of power, and they have their own potency. Uh, and then I wanted to kind of put them in a situation where that kind of potency, that potential, uh, allows them to become even more magical and, and, and be transformed in, as much as possible by kind of technology. I mean, I didn't, it's not an entirely technical show, but there's, there's a kind of, you know, these, all these objects sit in a green screen or a blue screen, um, and once they're in that green, sc green screen space, that kind of chroma key space, then potentially anything can happen, right? Any, they could be in any scenario, any, any kind of fantasy that they have, they can kind of take part in. Um, 
And then, and then there's, and then I've tried to kind of, I don't know, bring them to life through sound as well. The, 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 a lot of the objects are making sounds, making noises, and 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 I wanted that to be like a kind of song that they're kind of singing to each other. So you, I had this thought when I was coming up that if I did the show again, I I think I'd, I'd take the objects and I'd put them in a circle so they had their back to us, yeah? So they, like they, didn't, they, 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 they didn't care if we were looking at them or not. They're, they're, they're kind of in this, they've, they've gathered themselves together and they're just doing their thing. And whether we're there or not, doesn't matter. I kind of wish I'd done that. Maybe I'll do that. And then, and then the other thing, that just to finish on about this show that I've got to find now, is, uh, is, oh, can anyone see on my desktop a thing called Venetian? Venetian, Venetian. No, is it gone? Venice. Venice, no, Vene it says, it's a hard drive called Venetian. Oh, I haven't plugged it in, that's why. I oh, know it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, technology's great. Um, it's because it's in here. Okay, so the, the, the other thing, I mean, I was trying to refer to this, this, this idea of, of kind of using my own work and, and kind of reusing it. And, and I like this idea of things just continually, continuing indefinitely, and they just get, they just get kind of amalgamated into this, um, into this mush of, of things that I'm making. And one of the ideas that I, I'm, one of the reasons to make the show was that I could get these objects that are very precious, you know, and, and some of them extremely rare, and I, you know, otherwise I could not get my hands on. One of the reasons to make it was that I could, I could then uh, record them. I could, I, could, I could extract all the information that I wanted from these things. You know, I could, I could, I could film them, I can photograph them, I can, I can uh, scan them with a 3D scanner. I can do all these things. And I'll show you, um, I'll show you what I mean. So these, these are, this is 3D, a 3D scans of, of some of the objects in the show. So basically, with a, with a, just a, it's a really simple, uh, well not simple, but it's, it's, it's deceptively simple, but if you just, you just pass this scanner over an object, and then, and then it, it, it creates this three-dimensional mesh that then you can kind of uh, manipulate. That's, that's so that, and then once I've got that, I can do all sorts of things with it. There's this other thing, you can do this with Connect. Is that on this? No, that's not that interesting. Another one. Oh, this one I like. These are just tests at the moment. So this is this object in the show, it's called a bowley. And uh, it's kind of African fetish. And then I get to virtually, that's my hand, having a stroke of it to rump. Which, you know, feels good. I, 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 you know, the more I do these, I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to, I, I kind of amplify my own perversity sometimes. It's not, it's not, it's not, I'm a pervert. I'm just, you know, there's a kind of, there's a fetishistic a aspect of me that, that is, that wants to touch things. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a pervert. I just like to touch things. Um, I, you know, I, I, I want to touch things in the world, not so much, but when things are on screen, then, then I, I kind of want to get my fingers on them in this kind of impossible way. I want to be able to, you know, I want to be able to sink into that space and, 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 and palpitate, is that the word? You know, no, no one's going to help me out with that. that, that. <laughs> Manipulate them. Palpate, palpitate. This is this is a uh, is another one. 
it looks better. And I'll show that. Hold on, let me show you that again because I kind of like. Like I say, these are just kind of, these are sort, sort of tests. I'm doing this. Basically, this is what I'm going to show in in Venice. Uh, I'm going to show, I'm going to show a kind of, uh, a sort of recording, like a flat pack version of the show in Nottingham. And so I'm working out these things with a friend of mine, Tim. And what we can do with them, once we've got, you know, once we've extracted the data from these things, then we can do whatever we want with them. Oh, this is this is quite a bizarre one. This this is when I mean, we haven't done too much with this, but so this is this is you know Connect that you get for Microsoft. There's a there's a hack that you can get for it that allows you to use it as a 3D scanner, and so that's what we did. That's what we did in that room, and then and then we actually 3D scanned with this other uh, scanner this this object. So that's a superimposition of the two scans put together. So that, that, it's kind of there and not there, if you know what I mean? Which I find, you know, it's, like, it's, it's almost like with this stuff, it's almost like going back to like early cinema and that idea of like, you know, trains are, are threatening, you know, people used to duck from a train heading to the screen. It's, it's kind of, you can't, you know, the, the reality of them, the kind of, you know, phenomenological reality of, of looking at these things for me, feels very confusing. I sort of, you know, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what's what. It's kind of, um, it's kind of, it's like this, you know, this is a good one, this, because this, the Minotaur is this kind of symbol of, of, of kind of the unnatural, and it's, 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 the, it's the symbol of, of, of kind of, uh, it was made, it, it, shall I tell you the intro? All right, the Minotaur story is quite good. So the Minotaur is, is uh, the, the, the wife of Minos, I think. The wife of Minos in, in mythology uh, was attracted to a bull, this beautiful white bull that was, that was sent by the gods. And the wife was attracted to this bull. And so she asked um, Daedalus, like Daedalus and Icarus, um, who was known as the, uh, as the kind of great... He's like the father of engineering, Daedalus. He's, like the, he's, he's, he's kind of known as the great artificer. And she asked him to make her a bull costume, a cow costume, sorry, a cow costume, so she could trick the bull into copulating with her. And the bull did. She was in this cow costume inside this machine. The bull comes and inseminates her, and she gave birth to the Minotaur. And so the Minotaur in myth is this, is, this, uh, is this creation of kind of the human and the non-human. It's kind of, it's, it, it, it comes out this kind of mechanical, unnatural process. And, uh, and, and that's what this is for me. There's something unnatural about this. There's something, it's like the appearance of something working against nature, you know, if you know what I mean. Maybe no, maybe no one else feels like that, but I do. It's, it's disturbing. There's a video in a... I just showed a bit of it in the proposal for a show by Wendy Vanity. Does anyone know Wendy Vanity's videos? Uh, they're great. They're on YouTube. And there's a, there's a bit... I want to show it to you, actually, instead of just talking. And then I'm going to stop. Oh, no, it's too late. It's gone. Anyway, there's a bit where, they're, where, they're, where this cat thing kind of interfaces with this glass bottle. And it's just... It's like physics is just destroyed in that moment. It's just this act of, it's just this very unnatural act that I find really physically sort of repulsive and disturbing. And these, these, that's what I want out of these things. So that's, a, that's a connect scan of some of the stuff. Um, another one, another one. It's a bit boring. Oh, this is a good one. This is a, this is a kind of scan of Felix. Collapsing. Actually, it's not so good, that one. That's the wrong one. 
Oh, this is a little experiment we did. Right, let's to show you this as the final one. Just, you know, that you can make the things become like matter, become, you know, when I look at that, I mean, it's not, it's only, it's a rough um, workout, but there's something like that thing becoming like, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming like some kind of horrible, disgusting substance, you know, and, and, I, and I feel it, I feel that kind of disgust as that, as that thing inflates itself and becomes kind of this uh, horrible parody of itself. Um, how do I put the, where's that lights gone? Put the lights back on. Okay. Um, I think that's it, really. I think, I think I've kind of exhausted myself. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love... Thank you.